cars, buses, trucks, planes, tractors, boats, and more. This is the story of Mahindra, the Indian company that started with knockdown jeep kits after World War II and became a money powerhouse that owns Sangyong and Pininfarina. Yes, that Pininfarina. So stick around until the end of this video to find out how a small family-owned business from India became an integral part of today's international automotive industry, Jeep scandal and all. Mahindra's story begins in 1945 when brothers K.C. Mahindra and J.C. Mahindra joined forces with Ghulam Muhammad to create a steel trading company named Mahindra and Muhammad. A year and a half later, Muhammad left the company and eventually became Pakistan's first finance minister after India gained independence from the British Empire. Then, in 1947, the Mahindra brothers embarked on a mission to assemble 75 jeeps at Masgaon in Mumbai. This would be the beginning of a long story for the Indian automaker. Shortly after, the company was renamed Mahindra and Mahindra. Now, I have to mention that today Mahindra and Mahindra does basically everything. And I mean everything. Cars, buses, trucks, tractors. It's actually the biggest tractor manufacturer in the world. Planes, generators, boats, construction equipment, logistics, real estate, hospitality, defense, two-wheelers, and more. But because I assume nobody wants to sit in front of their computers listening to four hours of this, I'll try to keep it short and just talk about the car side of business. Okay, so like I said, Mahindra's car business started in 1947 when they began assembling Jeep CJ2s under license. As years passed, the CJ2A made way for the CJ3A and then for the CJ3B, which would go on to become an icon of the Indian motoring landscape, with manufacturing going on until 2010 with minimal changes. Now, what you need to know in order to understand the success of the aging Jeep in India is that the country had a tiny road network in the 50s and 60s and the CJ was easy to repair and needed little maintenance, so it was a perfect fit for the landscape. Production went from just under 1200 units in 1953 to over 21,000 in the 1980s, but even so the basic Jeep received minimal improvements. The original Hurricane engine was still offered until the 90s. In 1979 Mahindra and Mahindra licensed diesel engines and transmissions from Peugeot that found their way into the CJ and later Kia sourced transmissions and transfer cases were being fitted in India's Jeep. Isuzu was also an engine supplier with a 1.8 liter gasoline unit as well as International that offered modified variants of its utility vehicle motors. Like I previously mentioned, the old CJ carried on one way or another until 2010 with the last model based on the Willis Jeep being called Mahindra Major. It featured a modified chassis that was larger than the original and was powered by either international harvester-derived diesels, Peugeot diesels or Isuzu petrol engines. In 1985 Mahindra launched the MM540, which was its first car that didn't have CJ in its name, because the Jeep license expired and the original name couldn't be used anymore. Under the hood it had a 2.1 liter Peugeot diesel engine, which was mated to a 4-speed manual transmission and a 2-speed transfer case. Ten years later, in 1995, the old MM540 was upgraded to the MM550, which was meant for army duty. It had a 2.5 liter diesel engine from Peugeot that could make 72 horsepower and a 5-speed manual transmission. The last of the CJ-based Mahindras was the Major, which debuted in 2001 and lasted until October of 2010. It was powered by a 2.7-liter diesel engine mated to a 5-speed gearbox. 
Another Mahindra model was the Armada, which was built between 1993 and 2001 and replaced by the Bolero, which was basically just an upgraded Armada with a different name that's still being built today. It can carry up to 9 people and throughout its career it was offered with numerous engine choices. At first there were Peugeot diesels that made 76, 96 or 101 horsepower. Then with the launch of the second generation Bolero, a 2.5 liter diesel developed in-house by Mahindra was shoved under the hood of the Indian SUV with a power output of just 72 horsepower. 2002 marked a new era for Mahindra when it comes to the production of cars. Until the launch of the all-new Scorpio, Mahindra was just an assembler of vehicles. All of the cars it made until this point were more or less based on the ancient Jeep CJ3, although later models were improved and had different chassis and engines. But with the launch of the Scorpio, Mahindra did something very interesting, seeing how the company didn't really have the knowledge to make a car from scratch. So it employed the power of its suppliers, which designed the major systems of the Scorpio with the only inputs from Mahindra being design, performance specifications and program cost. The design and engineering of the systems were carried out by the suppliers as well as testing, validation and materials selection. Sourcing and engineering locations were also chosen by suppliers and the parts were later assembled in a Mahindra plant under the Mahindra badge. Using this technique, Mahindra was able to bring an all-new model to market with an investment of just $120 million, including the improvements made to the manufacturing plant which is a small cost compared to Western automakers which sometimes invest double or triple that to make an all-new car. The Scorpio is powered by a Mahindra-developed 2.2-liter Amhok diesel engine that makes 140 horsepower and 320 newton meters of torque and is mated to a 5-speed manual transmission. The first facelift came in 2006 and brought some visual enhancements as well as a 6-speed automatic transmission. The Scorpio got three more facelifts in 2009, 2014 and 2017 and in 2007 there was a pickup version added to the range called Scorpio Getaway. The Scorpio is still in production today. 2007 was also the year when Mahindra entered the passenger vehicle segment for the first time with a badge engineered version of the Renault slash Dacia Logan sold as the Mahindra Verito in India. The Verito later received a hatchback variant, but it wasn't the Sandero. Instead, Mahindra cut the back of the car and made it into a hatchback-looking subcompact car with a trunk opening that resembles that of a sedan. In other words, it's a hatchback that doesn't have a hatchback. The Verito became India's first electric sedan with the E Verito version, which features a three phase AC induction motor that makes 31 kilowatts and 91 newton meters of torque. In 2010, Mahindra bought a majority stake in Riva, the maker of the famed G Wiz, and started production on the E20 in 2013. Mahindra Electric currently makes the E20 Plus, which is the successor to the E20, the E Verito, E Supro, Trio, Trio Zor, and E Alpha Mini. As you can see for yourself, most of these are small and light commercial vehicles, as well as three wheelers that can navigate the killer traffic of Indian cities. In 2010, Mahindra also began production on the first generation TAR, which replaced the old CJ-based Major. A second generation was launched in 2020. In 2011, Mahindra bought Sangyong, South Korea's 4x4 specialist, and began selling a rebranded version of the Rexton SUV. Currently, Mahindra makes around 20 different models, excluding three-wheelers. Some of these are developed in house like the Scorpio and Bolero, while others are badge engineered versions of other models. The Alturas G4 is a Sangyong Rexton, the e Verito is an electric first generation Dacia Logan and the XUV300 is a Sangyong Tivoli. The latest models from Mahindra that were developed in-house are the KUV100, 
a small crossover-like city car, the Marazzo MPV and the XUV500. 2017 marked the opening of Mahindra's first manufacturing facility in the United States, in Detroit, where they're assembling the first-generation tar-based Roxor from complete knockdown kits. The Roxor is not road legal. Instead, it's sold as a side-by-side -side with a 2.5-liter Mahindra turbo diesel engine that makes 62 horsepower and is mated to a 5-speed manual transmission or a 6-speed automatic. Now, knowing Mahindra's history with Jeep, it's obvious that the Roxor looks like an old CJ. And Jeep itself knows this, so in 2018 it filed a copyright infringement dispute, which it won, leading to a ban of sales for the Roxor. But Mahindra redesigned the Roxor in 2020 and it can once again sell it on the American market as a side-by-side, -side, although it now looks far less like a Jeep CJ. This isn't Mahindra's first foray into the US automotive market. Its first attempt was in 2010 when it partnered with Global Vehicles to sell the Scorpio pickup, but the deal eventually fell through and there were a bunch of pissed off dealers that didn't get what they bargained for. Since 2013, the company has had a technical center on US soil and is a long-time tractor distributor. Since 2018, Mahindra owns legendary design firm Pininfarina, and under its ownership, the Italian firm has developed the Battista electric supercar, which is slated to enter production in 2021. There's a lot going on at Mahindra and I uncovered just the tip of the iceberg with this video. It's a huge company with manufacturing facilities all over the world and an attitude that led it to become a big player in the automotive business. Not to mention it's the biggest name in tractors and a force to be reckoned with in the truck segment. And that's it. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite Mahindra model is. I know mine is the latest generation tar. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching.